to Northwestern and lost by six. Northwestern only lost by six. She was with somebody. She was with somebody working. Start time for game two is Our format for this evening will be we will ask the coach to make an opening statement and then we would like the first questions directed to the student athletes. And then once we have asked them questions, we'll dismiss them and the coach will remain for further questions. Xavier is on the way down. The locker room is open for 30 minutes, so it's anticipated until 9 o'clock. Florida State locker room, likewise, uh, their locker room is open for 30 minutes as well. 
Again, the start time for the second game is 8.51, 8.51. And for those just arriving, our format this evening, we'll, we will ask the coach to make an opening statement, and then we would ask that the first questions be directed to the student athletes. Uh, then we will allow them to leave, and the coach will remain for further questions. Thank you. Question? I'm going to go ahead and line up. Uh, is there somebody on this side that knows they have a question ready? Or? Okay, you can just give it to him when you go. Did you? I'll start over. I'm going to start over here and then I'll. Okay, Coach Mack, we'll ask for you to make an opening statement, then we'll take questions from the student athletes first. Coach Mack. Yeah, I don't even know where to start. I'm, I'm you know, I'm so excited for uh, the guys next to me and the guys in the locker room. You know, they, uh, they earned it. Our team's gone through a lot of adversity this year, and, um, you know, we stayed the course. We had a meeting at the beginning of the year, and we talked about, um, you know, how, how tough of a feeling it was in St. Louis in that locker room when we lost to Wisconsin. And instead of just saying attack, when we broke huddles, we wanted to talk about attacking and finishing. And uh, man, we finished today. And I, I'm really proud of this group. The biggest thing for us going into the, to this game today was to be able to take care of the ball, not get Florida State out in transition where they're phenomenal, and try to keep them off the glass. And we've been a pretty good rebounding team all year, but we've never faced the size and athleticism that we saw today. And uh, we really passed the test in those two areas, and it gave us a chance to win. And I thought guys really played loose on offense. And, I'm just really happy for these guys. Front row on our left. Congratulations, guys. Uh, Trey, this was obviously the stage in the tournament last year where you guys went out. How much of a factor and how much were you guys thinking about the Wisconsin game and uh, kind of using that as a motivational tool here? Uh, you know, I don't really think necessarily we were thinking about, you know, last year. Um, other than really we just got to finish. And like, I, like uh, we've been preaching all year. Uh, we attack and finish, so um, we definitely wanted to make it out this round, but I don't think necessarily um, too many people were thinking about last year. Okay, we'll go to our far right, and then we'll come back over here. Yeah, to both Tyreek and uh, Kaiser, you guys combined to score 27 points, 17 more than your season average. Did you see something that you could exploit against Florida State or just unfold like that tonight? Tyreek, can you start? Um, from the jump, I just wanted to be aggressive, and if I could finish around the rim, I'll finish. That was basically it. Kaiser? Um, yeah, I was trying to move a lot more without the ball than we usually do, than I usually do. Um, we harp a lot on that on practice, and um, my guys found me in open spots when I took my open shots. Okay, center aisle. Uh, Mark Canizero for the New York Post. J for JP, a little bit coming off of what Chris was talking about. Can you just talk <coughs> about the last several weeks and uh, you know, maybe the last month or so, uh, and just kind of overcoming the adversity you guys have undergone, you know, taken and just kind of the the Big East tournament run and whatnot, and just kind of, I think you guys are five and one in the elimination games this month now. Yeah, that's one of the reasons why I love this team, um, <clears throat> because all the way down the line, everybody's tough, and 
Um, everybody loves to win and play hard, and I think that we showed that this past month. And um, I'm just excited for, for everybody in this program uh, that we're moving forward. And um, we really got to lock into details going forward and just continue to play hard. We'll stay in the front row, and then the second row has it. Trey, this question is for you. Uh, finally got off to a good start in the first half, right? Mm -hmm. um, was there a difference in your approach tonight, or was it just a matter of seeing shots fall early? Uh, I would say probably just a matter of seeing shots fall early. Um, I didn't really do anything different, um, you know, just playing hard, playing to win, and just, you know, trying to find the holes in the defense, you know, um, just kind of letting the shots come to me and just following the game plan. Second row. Question for you, Trey. Uh, was it 21 points in the second half tonight and then 18 on Thursday? Is there something about the second half in this building that gets you going? You know, I don't know. I, you know, that's funny uh, as you say that. But the past couple of weeks, that's, that's kind of what's been happening. But, um, you know, I, I really don't know what to say to that. I just, you know, I just keep playing, you know, despite first half. You know, you got to flip to the next page and just worry about winning. Our far right. Uh, at one point, you guys outscored their bench 21-2 to two for Trayvon and JP. How important is it for those guys to come off the bench and provide you that, that boost? Um, that's the great thing about this team is, is we got a lot of guys that can play. And if somebody's not stepping up, another person is. Yeah, to piggyback off JP, we got um, everybody on the team, you know, that, that, that's a playmaker. Uh, they come in and they affect the game in some type of way. So to be able to have, you know, that type of – um, Def coming off the bench will really not with the many players that we have is kind of critical for us. I think we have one in the third row on our far right. Uh, for Coach Mack, uh, what, do you, what did Florida State do well? Obviously, you guys blew them out tonight, but they're th uh, third in the ACC tournament. They finished second in the regular season, obviously picked up a lot of big wins. But what did they do well as a team? What can you give them credit for? Um, well, I don't think they played very well, to be quite honest. Um, I think we had a lot to do with that. I think our zones uh, affected them. And, um, you know, just watching them on tape over the last couple of days, what was very uh, scary to me and our, and our staff and we tried to convey to our team was their ability to get out in transition. And we just felt like we had to somehow figure out a way to box them in the half court by not turning the ball over. And we had, I don't want to say a season low, but uh, probably one of our season lows with nine turnovers, not taking um, – tough contested layups that can get blocked, trying to get multiple paint touches. Um, so, you know, they didn't play uh, their best, and I thought our guys played really loose and together and followed the game plan. And uh, there's a belief within this team that, um, uh, you know, we can play with anybody um, when we play together and, we, and we're tough-minded and we were today. Okay, we're going to let the student athletes go back to the locker room, guys. And we have about seven or eight minutes left for Coach. Locker room's open until about eight o'clock, until nine o'clock. I'm sorry, nine o'clock. Go ahead. Chris, uh, you called a timeout with about 90 seconds left in the game there. Was there any kind of a special message you wanted no. to deliver? The I, I was trying to substitute okay. our walk-ons, you know, and that's, that's why I was giving the signal. Yeah. That's what I told the Florida State coaching staff. I know the arena booed. Um, I didn't mean any disrespect by it, but usually you're allowed to substitute. And then they said, well, that was the first time out of the half called. Now, I didn't realize that. And so um, it automatically becomes a TV timeout. So, uh, is this this is is this the team you thought you had all along, even through the the down moments? No, I mean we we, we should have had Miles Davis. <laughs> we should have had Edmund Sumner. You know, we had a kid that get, got homesick over the summer. So no, not necessarily. But the group that I have, um, I'm really proud of because their resiliency and their. You know, I tell them all the time that when you get out in the real world, life's going to hand you uh, some lemons. And you can either pout about it or, or figure out a way to make lemonade. And our, our guys, despite all the adversity they've been hit with and you know, all the social media and everybody that tells them you know, how bad they are and, and how poor they are, they stayed with it. They believe in themselves and our coaching staff. And uh, it's a credit to them. And I'm just really proud of them. Center aisle and then our far right. Chris, uh, just down here in front. Um, I know you've, you've talked about addressing the Wisconsin game last year with the guys. Uh, for the guys that were a part of that, do you feel like tonight put that to bed a little bit now as you move forward? I hope so, but uh, I don't think they, um, they'll ever forget the finality uh, that comes with uh, losing you know, your last game in the NCAA tournament. Uh, I've been in a lot of, you know, I've been in 17, I think, NCAA tournaments as a player, assistant coach, and head coach, maybe more. And um, it's, a, it's a hard deal to take off that uniform for the last time or address your team for the last time. 
But that was the worst locker room that I'd ever been in. And we had a special year, and it ended um, quite suddenly. And I think our guys that were a part of that team really remember that. I think there's some desperation that we play with because of that feeling. Our far right, and then we'll come back to the center aisle. Coach, just how pleased are you with your, your defense? That zone defense held them 4 of 21 from 3 and really negated their athleticism quite well, a bit. It was good against Florida State. You know, it's not a panacea. It's not going to work every time we put it out there. But I thought um, it gave us the best shot to win, um, to try to be able to take the ball um, and make them stand rather than cut, you know, get, get them going downhill. And um, so it was effective for us. Uh, we still have to get better in our man defense. We still have to get better in our zone defense. The further you go along in this tournament, the tougher teams you play. We have about four minutes left. I have three questions lined up here, and then we'll come over here and then over here. Coach, I, I know seeds right here down the middle. And I, I know seeds can be misleading sometimes. This is your fourth Sweet 16 with Xavier as a six, as a 10, as a six, as an 11 seed. Can it be easier sometimes when you have a team that can use being disrespected or, or underestimated as motivation? I don't think it's ever easier, um, you know, because you're going to play tougher teams uh, given their regular season uh, outcomes. But, um, you know, I think having a chip on your shoulder mentality uh, usually helps in sports and competitive situations. Uh, so if it's working, you know, count us as 11 seed. We're going to go over to our right, third row. Coach, could you have expected this? And, like, what did you see from your players today that really surprised you? Um, no, I couldn't have expected it. I, I joke with our staff, it's the first time I've put walk-ons in the game uh, in about three months. So, uh, no, I couldn't expect it. You know, again, Florida State is a terrific team. They did not play their best today. Um, you know, that was one of the most complete games we played, and I thought uh, our guys gained confidence, especially early in the game, by not turning the ball over, which has really plagued us. Being able to handle their pressure and get some back doors, I think, gave our kids confidence. Our far left, second row. Chris, even under your best case scenario, did you, did you imagine holding FSU to two fast break points for 40 minutes? Uh, I feel like they had more than that. You know, I, I, don't, I don't necessarily buy into that. I know we turned the ball over and they, they got to the free throw line a few times. Maybe they don't categorize them as, as fast break points, but we needed to put them in the half court as much as we could. We, we probably did the best job that we could have uh, given their personnel. Uh, the fact that we only play seven guys, uh, eight guys at times, um, so, yeah, to, to do that uh, is one of the reasons that, that we're sitting up here uh, with a win. Coach, thank you very much. Congratulations. Thank you. Okay, we'll ask Coach Hamilton to make an opening statement, and then we'd like questions first for the student athletes, please. Coach Hamilton. I got to give Xavier a lot of credit because the things that have been good to us all year in terms of getting deflections and steals and forcing turnovers, uh, uh, they executed so well in the half court, they didn't turn the ball over. They missed a lot of that, and we've been a very inconsistent three-point shooting team this year, and obviously they knew that. And, they packed it in and made it very, and were determined that if we were going to win the game, we was going to have to hit from the perimeter. And they did a very good job of, of denying, of packing it in and, and, and causing 
us to have to take the perimeter shots. And obviously the night we were four for 21, we, hadn't, we didn't shoot very well both nights here. This team has always been able to find a way to win in spite of maybe some of our shortcomings today. It kind of caught up with us. I thought they did a very good job of, of minimizing their turnovers, uh, being very patient, executing on the offensive end. Obviously, they shot the ball extremely well from the perimeter. And uh, you have to give them a lot of credit for doing what they had to do in a big stage like this to win the game. Questions for Terrence and Michael, please. Raise your hand. Center aisle on our right. Uh, yeah, this can be for both of you guys. You faced zone defenses before this year and won games. Was this just a matter of you not making shots? Did they do anything special at the zone that you weren't expecting? Terrence? Um, yeah, yeah, we just didn't hit shots, and, you know, we weren't able to get downhill to the basket. And, you know, it's hard to create energy when you're not, you know, hitting the three ball and you see them hitting the three ball. Michael? Uh, the zone defense is really good. Like Coach said, they, they were able to pack it in, you know, and they want us to drive and get in the lane ball. Our guys did a very good job, you know, driving in there sometimes and uh, trying to make plays. Uh, we missed some wide open shots, and uh, it's not necessary by their zone, you know. We have some lapses on defense too as well. Back row on the center aisle. Terrence, I'm sure on the scouting report, you didn't think that Xavier would be shooting from three the way that they did tonight. Um, did you feel like the defense was lacking, or do you feel like they just hit some tough shots? Uh, no, they just hit some uh, tough threes. They were able to get in the paint and you know create for each other, and had you know standing wide open threes that they hit. Uh, I don't know what they shot, but they shot really well from three. Any other questions for Terrence or Michael? Front row. Michael, obviously a tough loss tonight, but what can you say about your final senior season and just the, the year that you guys had going 18-0 and at home, getting 12 wins over top 50 opponents? What can you say about this year? Well, first I'm, you know, thankful to God, you know, giving me this opportunity to, you know, come back. Like I said, uh, last year, the unfortunate thing happened, I had my injury, you know, I was able to come back this year, you know, play on that year. I'm thankful to FSU, to my coaching staff, you know, for giving me the opportunity, you know, to play basketball here at FSU. And uh, I'm proud of my teammates, you know, thankful to them too as well, just helping me, giving me this chance to make the tournament, just to experience what it feels like, you know, to play in the, uh, in the tournament. Obviously, last year's team was supposed to make this tournament. They didn't. But what did it mean this year for this year's team to get to the round of 32 for the first time since 2012? Uh, it's an amazing feeling. Uh, you know, you grow up dreaming about this opportunity. Uh, so it was amazing to see everyone, you know, uh, happy when our name came up for the first time. You know, everyone was thinking first time in the tournament. Uh, so it was a good experience. Front row on our left. Terrence, in, in, in your wildest nightmare scenario, did you ever envision the game unfolding the way it did today? Um, no, uh, you never envisioned losing uh, before games, uh, you know, but they played hard and, you know, that's what happened. Is there a final question for Terrence or Michael or we'll let them go to the locker room? Thank you, guys. Questions for Coach Hamilton? Please raise your hand. Back row, center aisle. Leonard, did they, uh, I know they were a difficult team to prepare for because of all the sets they run and things like that. Did they do anything differently or was it difficult to prepare for them in a short amount of time? Well, I think it was a combination of, of both. Uh, they are a team that really, they've done a very good job of, of executing uh, their offense. They run a, a ton of sets. The, the night, uh, I thought we got exposed uh, while big guys getting back screen and not being prepared to uh, get those, those those uh, the scheme that they had were cut into the bucket. That was that was something that these guys had had not been exposed to all year. But I, I think more than anything else, we've always tried to minimize uh, um, uh, the effectiveness of of, of zone defense against us all year long. And we've always found a way to hit just enough threes, enough of perimeter shots to kind of keep people at bay. Uh, but the, the night, this, they, they, they did a very good job of, of really, really clogging up the lane, which really t gave us no other opportunity other than to force some shots or either take the, the, the perimeter shots. And uh, we had great looks. I mean, we had uncontested, wide-open uh, threes that uh, we normally shoot the normal percentage. 
a normal 35, 34, 35, 36%. And we, uh, just enough to keep us at bay to keep people from being able to pack it in the night. It was one of those nights where we just couldn't buy any. And, and then I thought they got energized. They're a really good three-point shooting team. And they got more energized. Uh, and it seemed like it kind of deflated our kids when we didn't, didn't connect on those, those uh, three-pointers. we go to our left in the second row. Coach, uh, despite the loss tonight, you guys still had obviously a very successful season. Um, could you kind of take us into the into your locker room? What was the message to the team after this one? Well, I, I did tell them I, that, that I thought we had a great season. Uh, we, every team has some weaknesses and, and some some shortcomings and some strengths. Uh, I thought we did a very good job all year long of playing to our strengths, uh, getting out in transition, getting some deflections, some steals. Uh, I, I thought that the, the night we met a team that really – uh, took advantage of the things that we were areas where we were weak. Um, I thought we learned a lot. Uh, I thought this team was very connected. Uh, there are times when I thought that they were growing uh, with, the, with the relationships. I think it uh, makes you feel that the future is very bright for, for these guys that are returning. Uh, and so I'm very proud of the effort that these guys gave. We, we had some amazing wins. Obviously, we played extremely well at home. Uh, but I thought that there were times when we were put in this type of stage and type of arena that we, some of our inexperienced show. I thought that uh, some, there were some times when we were very tentative. And I think a lot of us, because we have been a very average at best perimeter shooting team and we've had to execute in so many other areas the night, I thought it caught up with was a team that really shot the ball well from the perimeter and uh, we shot poorly from the commit. And, and defensively, uh, it, I thought it really, really took a starch out of our out of, out of our kids, but to look back at this season, to see um, what we've been able to accomplish, uh, I, I'm, I'm very proud of these guys and how they've hung in against some extremely good competition. We've got time for two more on our right and then over here. Coach, obviously, as the season goes on, the competition gets tougher. But what happened down the stretch? This team started off 18 and two, finished off its last 15 games going eight and seven. I thought we played against some very good competition. The ACC is is a very very competitive league. And when you play people, especially the, the, the second time around, they are very, very prepared, and they are, they are improving as well. I, I don't think it was anything negative with our, our, our team. I just think we play in the ACC, uh, you have people that are capable of playing at a very high level, and we got caught with some people playing very well. We lost to Duke. We lost to, on the road. We lost to uh, 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 a very good Notre Dame team on the road. Uh, but I thought we can, we fought back and won some good games on the road. So I think it was just a combination of of uh, playing against uh, some high level competition, and and um, uh, that's what happens when you're in a league like the ACC. Front row on our left, coach. You said that you ran into a team that took advantage of areas where you felt your team was weak. Specifically, which area are you talking about? Is it perimeter shooting? Perimeter that, shooting. And we, we couldn't. We we had a very difficult time matching their accuracy on from the perimeter, and sometimes we a team will shoot what they normally shoot uh, when they even get wide open looks. The day they shot exceptionally well. Seven, first half they shot 70%, the second half they shot for the team they shot a little over 60 some percent. Most of the time people will shoot at the level that they normally shoot on, on a regular basis. The day they, were, they shot exceptionally well and I thought we shot exceptionally poor. Uh, as a follow up to that, is this your biggest game Disappointment as a coach. Well, not necessarily. As a, I'm not disappointed. I'm just. I'm. I'm proud of what we've been able to accomplish. Uh, that's the nature of a game of basketball. You're gonna always have a game when you're not at your best, and our teams at, at at their best, and and you. It's hard sometimes to overcome that. Uh, but overall, I got you. Got to give uh, Xavier credit because I thought that they got they allowed they got into that magic level that that emotional frame of mind you have to be in that allows you to be at that peak and, 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 and play sometimes even better than you normally do. And I thought they were able to, to get themselves in that, in that mindset tonight. And I thought that uh, our kids were not quite as sharp and you gotta give them credit for uh, going out and, and playing the type of game that, that uh, really kept us at bay. Not turning the ball over, being patient on the offensive end and then knocking down the threes when they had them. Thank you, Coach Hamilton.